Hello, everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and today I am joined by Holly Rose Stones. Welcome, Holly. How are you? Hello. Hello. Good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm so excited to be back. Yeah. It's been so long since I've done one of these, so I'm really excited to get edited again. Yes. Well, I'm excited to be here with you because your work is absolutely stunning. For those of you that don't know Holly, she is an incredible photographer and digital artist and a queen at the (laughs) self-portrait. I mean, oh my God, you have just phenomenal work and I'm very excited to learn from you today. Um, I just want to welcome everyone into the chat. Thank you for being all here or thank you for being here with us. And um, I want to give everyone a reminder to if you haven't already please subscribe to our new adobe live channel over on youtube uh you can keep up with the the latest streams there and then also here on behance as well and join in on the chat and today um talk with holly about all things that we will be working on um and then just a reminder don't forget to check out our creative our daily creative challenge right before this stream tune in and challenge yourself with each prompt every single day So Holly, I won't waste any more time with my spiel. I am excited to show everyone your work. So let's, let's check it out. Yes. So here we have my latest project. Um, But yeah, I'm a self-portrait artist mainly. Um, I shoot creative clients and things like that, but it's all things, concepts, props, sets, everything like that. Um, But I just love to love color at the moment so I'm working on a color project and um, so this is the green one as you can see on the screen now um, and I've been working through different colors I've done green I've done yellow let me just see if I can get yeah so I do like two separate ones um, on the green and then the yellow one and I've also done a pink one recently but that's just it's waiting to be released at the minute um, but yeah today I think we're going to be well, I know we're going to be working on the blue project, hence why I'm wearing blue, because I thought I'd just bring the color in. <laughs> um, but yeah, should we get started or? Yeah, how are we let's, gonna, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So the concept I had, let me just find this. So I usually work from sort of like creative ideas that come to my head in either in a dream, I usually wake up from dreams and then write them down. Um, I'll be in the middle of the night writing notes on my phone. <laughs> and then, uh, or I'll be in the shower. It's usually the shower. That's quite a popular phase. Or when I'm out on like a walk, we live in the countryside. Um, and I'm currently in my studio at the moment, uh, which we renovated recently. So I, we love going for walks around here. And that's sort of when all my ideas start flowing. Um, but yeah, yeah, the first thing I do when it comes to concepting is sort of write down all my ideas in like little sketches um, and it, they're not very good. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but I just sort of like, it's just instant little little notes, stick men, anything I can write down. But today I am revealing my blue project and the prop that I'm going to be using. So as you can see, if I go back to these ones, let me go back. So with the green project, um, it sort of started from an idea that I got when I was in a, it was like a meditation class that my friend was hosting. And she got us all to sort of sit in a circle. And she said, basically, she talked us through all these like nice, calming, you know, really lovely, felt amazing. I was almost falling asleep. And then she said, imagine a color and imagine the room is changing to that color. And my brain instantly went to green. So I saw sort of like, it was really, really strange. I mean, I've got a vivid imagination anyways, but I could imagine the room just turning green. So that's kind of where this project came from um, and started. So yeah, I basically use props um, and try and keep everything the same color within the image, apart from myself, obviously. Um, So yeah, when it comes to obviously creating the props and things like that, I like to make them big or make, you know, make them bold and make them, stand out so when it came to actually doing the blue project um let me go with that to this one i decided that i wanted to create a large huge um telephone but i wanted to sort of test test my ideas and concepts with a telephone first um and then i'm going to make a huge telephone so in the next few months i'm actually going to be building one from scratch oh wow um, yeah so this is kind of like the pre pre-shoot of the blue project but I'm going to be editing it today and I've got a really like 
solid idea for it at the moment. And then hopefully from this image, I can then go on to and create this like image that I have still, I have got the idea in my head. But yeah, so that's kind of where my ideas start. Um, but I did the shoot last week and I'll get the images up. So the first thing that I do is I'll go through my images and I've sort of picked the ones that I wanted. I, I kind of go through on bridge. I just minimize that and go through on bridge and put five stars on the ones that I want to like maybe look at or relook at. Um, but yeah, so as you can see with the idea, I had sort of my head like rested on the um, telephone. So yes. we kind of, we shot with that first. Um, and then I kind of liked the idea of my hair sort of dangling down. It felt mm. a bit more flowing. Um, so I picked this image, which I'm going to open up into Photoshop. Uh, Holly, Sam was wondering if you shoot these at home or do you have a studio that you use for photo shoots? Yeah, so I'm actually in my studio at the moment. Um, we renovated this from scratch, me and my partner, Jack, and it's like an outbuilding. It was actually a pigsty um, way back. It was a farm where we live. And um, so the floor is very wonky. And <laughs> I actually named the studio the Wonky Studio and it's got an in its own Instagram account. So if you ever want to go and have a look at renovation videos, go and have a look on that. Oh my God, I will definitely check it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we kind of just went into it in the pandemic um, because we were living here, obviously. And I was like, right, that, that would make a great studio. So we just thought, right, let's just do it now and get it get it to a point. And I love like rustic and old. And, and as you can see in the background, I like old furniture. And um, so it was really nice. It sort of like meshes my style nicely. And then obviously this is where I shoot from all my self-portraits in here um, and create all the sets and props in here as well. So yeah, this is the images, the base images that I'm going to work from. And let me just open the third one. So, I mean, we saw from the, let's just open that one up again. From the idea that I've sort of got my hand like poking through the backdrop. And I like to paint all my own backdrops as well, because I like the texture. I mean, you can probably see here, but I like the, like the, just the, grittiness of it um so I'm just going to open that one up and yeah it was fun so I shoot my self-portraits um either on my own or with my partner Jack so we always get involved in fact I've probably got a picture of him poking his head through doing a test shot <laughs> where is he there he'll love that yes <laughs> so That's he helps awesome. me <laughs> yes um, but yes, yeah, so the first thing that I do when creating a self-portrait or creating <laughs> a the sort of base canvas of my image is I usually shoot, obviously, in portrait. Uh, sometimes I shoot in landscape, but I mainly crop with a four by five crop. So I'm just going to expand this frame a little bit. Um, and then... What I'm going to do now is actually going to just tilt it a little bit because my head is kind of wonky like this studio floor <laughs> <laughs> and just fill that out a little bit but not too much because I, I always expand the frame well crop outwards so that I've got the whole image rather than crop inwards then I can use this like top bit if I need to um but yeah then I'm gonna pick up this with the lasso tool pick up the phone so we actually cut obviously a hole out from my head here um and this is the brick wall behind where obviously the studio is and I'm just going to copy and paste that onto there so we've got that as a base image um I'm just going to resize this a little bit so it goes under my chin um but I'd quite maybe like some feedback as we go along because obviously concept and like I've got it in my head what I want but it'd be nice to like get everyone's feedback as well yeah definitely um but yes yeah, so in fact let me just grab my arm in as well so we'll go on to that one um lasso tool again I'm just going to select this in fact I might select the whole thing copy edit 
and then I can sort of play around with the size a bit. But so now I've got the images in, I'll just turn the eye off of them so they're out of the way for the moment. And then I'm just going to fill in this back bit um, where we've got no backdrop. So what I do to do this is I'll pick up the lasso tool and just make a, like quite a, not, not too rigid, just sort of like selection. And then I'll select the other side. Because the backdrop's textured as well, you don't really need to worry about the fill of it, which is, I mean, I use content aware fill. So let me just mm -hmm. get this up and it'll make more sense. Oops. Oh, why is that not <laughs> working? Oh, I'm on the wrong layer there. Let me try, try that again. The story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably a little bit big, actually. Let me just take a bit off that one. So. Content aware fill. And then this will fill in the areas on the side. Will it? It's, it's loading, it's loading. When it's ready. Oh. 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 It's oh, it, oh. <laughs> it what thinks there? that it, that's weird. Yeah. Oh, that's... It looks like it's select inverse. That was strange because it yeah, was selected. It was selected the other way. Yeah. Try that again. Oh, that's it. It's doing it now. There we go. There we go. There we go. So Photoshop I'll just, glitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just press OK on that. Um, I'm not too worried about the areas that look a bit strange at the moment because I'll fill those in in a little bit but I like to get the base of the image done first and then I can work around that. Cool. So when it's decided, there we go. So this actually opens up onto another layer. So you can actually turn that on and off if you want to, which is really handy yeah. just to see where, where it's actually sitting. And then I, I might actually just go into the layer mask tool, click on my brush and just with a black, just take out a little bit there, just to add in a bit more texture. But I'm not going to worry about that for too much for too long. I think what I'll do actually is I'm going to just select both layers and just tilt it a little bit again, because I feel like my head's slightly wonky. And I'll just make that a little bit bigger. There we go. What was um, the concept inspiration for this piece? Um. Because of the telephone, I think mm -hmm. with, so I have an idea for obviously the main image that's going to be on a giant telephone. Um, and I'm sort of, I mean, I can say what I'm going to do here. It might not happen in the end, but I was going to sort of lay on the top where like here, this part of the telephone um, and have the, tele the, the, which it will be a giant telephone. It's actually going to be real life. So, and then that sort of hanging over the top of me. So yeah. I was thinking like, how else can I use my, cause I like to do sort of a, a main image and then a portrait image. It's like, how I, how could I create a portrait out of this? So I just envisioned my head just sort of like resting on it. Um, so that's kind of yeah. how, it, it wasn't really too complicated. It was more just the fact that like, how can I interact with the telephone, just my head? Yeah. Yeah. And was it kind of just an idea based on like the interaction of the phone and the tel or your the telephone in your head just kind of for fun? Or was there like a deeper meaning behind it? Or um, so usually with my images, I kind of like there's always sort of a playful aspect to it. And I think mm -hmm. with self-portraiture self -portrait over the years, I've used it as a way of distraction and you know, getting out of my head because I'm quite, I'm a bit of an overthinker. I like to, I'm quite deep in, in nature. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a really sensitive person. So when it comes to like self-portraiture, I feel like I can express myself um, when I feel like maybe people around me don't understand me. So I'm just like, I'll just put it into an image. Um, so whether they have like an unconscious meaning, yeah. um, sometimes I know exactly what I'm doing, um, yeah. but otherwise, I'm just like, I just like to experiment and it makes me feel free um, from all the 
all that side of things. So I, yeah, it kind of is a bit of both in terms of like just getting out of my own head and like just being playful with it, especially nowadays, because I was I, for a long time, I did probably about 10 years of self-portraiture where I was like shied away from color. Mm. Um, and I, I did a self-portrait challenge where um, basically did seven portraits a day for seven days, but I did it over. So I probably did about six or seven over the three years, like every six months. Um, and I did a rainbow themed one and I absolutely fell in love with color. And I was like, I've never used color like this before. So since then I'm like, everything has to have like bold colors. Ah, oh, I love it. I love that so much. And I love your explanation too, because I think as artists, sometimes the meaning is what we can't express in words. It's just exactly. a feeling that exists within our head. And exactly. uh, yeah, I think you just, you explained it so perfectly. It's like all of these things that we go through, all these things that we feel that come out in our art and we aren't really sure why. Sure, and that's totally yeah. okay. And I tend to like, we'll produce an image and then the meaning comes after. Yep. I feel, it, I don't tend to like to say, this is what this is going to be about. It's kind of like, right, I'll just flow with it and create this prop and make this. And then after I'm like, okay, that that's a part of my life that's been documented as well. And I just feel like it's, yeah, it, the, the idea will come and then the concept after and the, the meaning behind it. Absolutely. So I'm just getting carried away here because I was just going to, zoom out and see how big I want this so I tend to put in the images first and then I'll go in and actually cut everything out so what I'll do is I'll just bring that layer back up and I'm going to cut out with a layer mask and brush tool again and just cut out this bit so I think today is probably more about showing the concept and the, the composition of everything. And then maybe tomorrow I'll refine everything and make everything look nice and add in shadows and everything like that. Cool. So uh, Fairy wants to remind you to save your work. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Did I save it? I don't know. Oh, here we go. There we go. I did it. Perfect. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> great, great key there. That's always good yes. to do. <laughs> so I'm going to, with this concept, I kind of wanted it um, with the original idea. You could see like the phone at the side, but as I've been, I've sort of went over it a little bit today and like, really refined it kind of a little bit so I wanted the arm to be on top as though it's like picking up the phone off my head kind mm. of like in so it looks a bit more together and a little bit ball more balanced so we're gonna go up here with that maybe a little bit in fact I'm just gonna move this over that way and I'll fill that little bit in in a bit So yeah, oops, there we go. And the idea is as well to like refine this area of my arm. So I'm gonna make it nice and smooth and so you can't see all the rips of the paper. So yeah, right. The next thing I wanted to do was to get in the cord. So we're gonna have, there's Jack again. <laughs> He's going to love this one. <laughs> Poking through. <laughs> so I think I'm going to use this cord. So we're going to open that one. And I'm just going to select again this one. And just copy, edit, paste. So yeah, we'll just make that a little bit bigger so that I can pop it behind. So it needs to just go behind the telephone layer. And then I think I'm going to warp it actually. So what I'll do is I never know where everything is. So I always just, <laughs> I know I, I, totally, 
I didn't even know you could do that until recently. And I was yeah. like, wow, this is helpful. <laughs> it's like the main thing that I use. I'm like, I don't forget where everything is. Yeah, so smart. So what I'm gonna what I'm doing here is I'm just so you, it's puppet warp what I'm using. And it brings up this like, oh, I'll just apply that and then I can zoom into it and show you what I'm doing. So puppet warp. So you put like little points on with this um picker and then you use this to and it kind of holds the uh i suppose i suppose the pixels in mm -hmm. each area so that you don't damage it when you're warping it and it makes it a bit more realistic i'm just gonna move that up a little bit you can put as many points on here as you want really it depends how you want to warp I think I'm just going to zoom out and see what that looks like. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just sort of getting everything into position first. And then I mm. like to, I, I, this is how I edit. I'll edit, you know, however long it takes me to do a base. And then I refine everything and go in and make sure that everything's perfect, perfectly cut out, perfectly shadowed or. Yeah, I kind of work the same way, just getting everything generally yeah. there because I've made the mistake before where I've edited something so precisely and then I'm like I don't like it <laughs> it's taken yep. me three hours <laughs> yep exactly I know that's been happening to me so much lately yeah. I'm like ah no why did I just spend all that time doing yeah. that oh, right I'm just gonna so I'm just duplicating the background that gets rid of the background and then I'm going to add in this bit with content aware fill again and that just so I've duplicated and then um, merged those images together because if we look back here that bit's actually separate uh, which is quite nice about content aware fill because it doesn't ruin the bottom layer or it doesn't spoil what you've already right. been working on and I tend to work quite quickly getting all the layers and then I'll go through all my layers and name them what they are because mm. that always helps naming yes. layers so content aware fill so this is going to pick up all this bit in the green is where the selection is and you can actually uh just erase where you don't want to be picked up. So like the hair bit, if I didn't want that, but I mean, it looks pretty good to me at the moment. I just thought I'd show you how it works. So yeah, press okay. And that is, I mean, I used to spend hours with clone stamp, uh, patch tool, filling in backgrounds, stretching everything. And now I'm just like content aware fill. It's amazing. I love it. Ah, the best. <laughs> invention yeah. ever into photoshop <laughs> it's so wonderful so the next thing i'm gonna do is so originally i wanted to have obviously with all my props in the images if i just go back to here just to remind everyone um i paint everything the same color obviously and then sometimes if you saw the before of this, the top that I have on is actually yellow because I couldn't find a green one that I liked. So I changed the color in Photoshop. Mm. But if I if I can help it, I would make sure that everything's the same color. Um, wow. Yeah. So um, are you just like picking this stuff up at Goodwill, getting like some cheap yes. things and then so painting I, them? Yeah, this, um, so I, uh, I'm not sure what you call it over in America, but we have car boots a boot fair sale okay um, yeah we call it car boots in the north of England okay <laughs> <It's>, cool <laughs> but um I was actually doing one with uh, my partner's Jack's um family and the next door car boot sale she, well she the stall owner she was like oh I've got this chair and I can't get rid of it and I was like I absolutely love that chair and it's yeah it's, I don't know if I've got a picture of it before I don't think I have Anyway, probably if you want to have a look, go have a look on my Instagram or TikTok. 
and you show it I'll show like take you through the whole process of doing this but oh, cool. she gave it to me for free so I was like this is great but it's like a really old um it was it needed re like covering and it sanding down and things like that so I was like you yeah. know what this is the perfect chair because I don't tend to like to ruin anything um it's usually things that I'm bringing back to life I suppose through my images and my art right um but yeah everything I've got, like the candlestick holders they were from uh, uh like charity shops and I think that that was wow. from eBay or something not very much I tend to keep everything quite like budgets quite low right um and then what do you do with everything afterwards? Just store it for so, another shoot or? Yeah, I tend to keep everything because I'm a little bit of a hoarder when it comes to things like that. <laughs> I uh, I'm not sure if you can see in the background here, but I've got a, a wardrobe where it's like, it's like, I call it the magic wardrobe. <laughs> yes. and, uh, yeah. And you open it and it's, it's just full of everything that I own like That's super images cool. and and I have like my unit over here which I sort of save everything I quite like to keep everything for a little while I mean I don't think I'll keep them forever but again when I'm editing it when I'm creating props it that's almost like the art as well I like to yeah yeah keep them just for well in case I ever wanted to do a show or an exhibition or something then I've got that that I can like make a little set and scene that's my that's my goal anyway my dream very very um, cool but yeah so going back to this when I was saying about the painting all the props different colors obviously at the same color of the background and um I will be creating the big phone and painting it blue so today I want to change the color of this phone to blue so again I'm going to refine the edges in a little while or maybe tomorrow but what I'll do is I'll just show you how I change the color I'll show everyone. Um, so what I'll do is I just move that out of the way. Um, so what I tend to do is pick up, uh, oh, hang on, here we go. Color balance and I'll change all the mid-tones, shadows and highlights just to like the blue, just to see if that changes. Cause I quite like to build the color blue rather than just like coloring it in and seeing mm -hmm. how it looks. And I like to use blend modes a lot as well. So I'll just control and create a clipping mask on this layer, which is the telephone layer. I'm gonna go back to the shadows. Um, and ideally in a little while, I'm gonna take off all these letters and numbers, maybe leave the numbers, but I'm probably gonna get rid of this little bit here um, because I, I want it to be clean and- Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna change the color of that. And then I'm going to pick up a new layer and pick up the color from the background uh, and just create a layer. And then I'm going to put that underneath there. So it actually is a layer mask on it, uh, sorry, clipping layer on the phone. Then what I'll do is I'll go to blend modes and I tend to just flick through these and see which one looks the best. Um, and I'll, pop color down first and then I'll just use the opacity to change it a little bit um so yeah then I'm going to duplicate that layer oops that one's oh <laughs> <laughs> I'll change just pop that under there so it goes back onto the phone oh yeah that's looking good yeah so what are you going to make your big phone out of so we've been brainstorming ideas because obviously I'm roping in Jack to help me, but I kind of, we've got, um, so from the ceiling of the renovation project, we had a lot of styrofoam boards mm. um, and styrofoam and uh, oh, what was it called? Just like different foams, insulation, that's it, insulation. Um, so I we had some left over actually from this project. So I think we're going to try and carve it out of that. Cool. Well, I, I love that. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. I don't know. I'm work. very excited this, to see. Yeah, this is the first time I've really created a big prop. I've created like a big moon before, but that's pretty straightforward. So this this is going to be intricate because I'm going to have to make the the numbers and the cord. Yes. I'm trying to. If anyone knows how I could make the cord, please let me know. Oh. We've we've already yeah. thought about wire, like thick wire. Um, but yeah, yeah we'll we'll see. 
I have to think about that one. Yeah, it's 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 like a work in progress at the moment. But I'm not sure really why I thought I need a big phone, but it just came to me. I was like, I'm, I'm yeah. prepared. So I've been watching loads of YouTube videos about carving uh, foam and all that. Cool. Is it foam? I think it's, uh, yeah, styrofoam, I think it is. Yeah, that would make sense. So, so yeah, so what I'll do now is I'm just going to group those layers together and just put telephone. So I know, know that that's where we're working. Oh, we got some then... suggestions. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Tell me uh, everything. <laughs> a coiled hose. That's a really good one. That ah. could work. And you could just paint it. Um, yes. And then uh, a slinky. Um, slinky, and then yes. Steve, <laughs> Steve said a snake. <laughs> a snake. I have actually got, I've got a snake uh, in my here. Not an actual real one. <laughs> it's plastic. So I might try and see if I can mold it round. Yeah, we were th we also we did think a slinky, but it's going to be too thin. But then we yeah. could stretch it out, and yeah, we'll see. Hmm. But this is a kind of like the fun side of like making the props is that you, from start to finish, I get so excited by it. Um, yeah. So if I'm having like a bad day again, it, like with self portraiture, it's more about a distraction for me. If I'm having a bad day and I'm like, right, I've got my project to work on, I can just put a show on or. Um, podcasts or whatever and I'm like right figure this out and it just takes my brain away from overthinking and everything so I just yeah it just helps me with that totally that's so yeah. cool right so what I'll do now is I, I'm actually gonna I think I'm happy with that blue for the moment but this is more just to, to see what the composition is going to be like and how I'm going to edit from now on but I'm going to duplicate that layer uh, and add in my cord to that layer but I'm just going to pop that underneath because obviously that's on top uh, and then I'll delete the foam from that one add in and create a uh, clipping mask onto the cord so that's that's gone onto the cord now uh, and then I'm just going to add a hue and saturation because that looks like it's a bit yeah it's just about playing around with this at the moment So I'll just turn the brightness down on that or up. So yeah, that is, I'll just pop that, rename that chord. Uh, and then obviously I need to change the phone, but that is obviously that I can't create a clipping mask for the whole layer of that. So I'm just gonna have to cut that out eventually. So let's just, oh. So if we move that into there, delete that. Where am I? That. And then I'm gonna create a clipping mask onto that layer. So obviously everything's gone blue and we're not, that's not cool at the minute. <laughs> so what I'll do is actually gonna create another group Um, drag that out. Oh, what's happening there? Can't create a mask on that. Let me just go back. Oh, why is it not let me create a clipping mask on that one? Um, I'm not sure about that. Uh, we'll pop. Pop it back in for now. And I'll have to create layers on those. So yeah, we've got this at the moment. And so the next thing I'm gonna do, in fact, I'm just gonna turn those layers off because it's distracting with that big blue splodge. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to um, put some makeup on me because I feel like my face is quite plain in this image. So I'm mm. going to pop in some blue eyeshadow. Ooh, that would be cool. And I, I did think about changing my hair blue as well. So, ah. so I'll just create a new layer and pick up the blue. I think we've already got it. Yeah. So I'm just going to add in very quickly. The blue. That looks really funny. 
So I'm just pasting this in with a brush, mm -hmm. quite a feathered one. Um, and then I'm going to go down to color. So that's really quickly changed things. And I love that. Um, I'm going to do that again, just with my that hair. Cool. I love it. I'm not really like quite, I'm bold with colors of the way that I dress, but with makeup, I don't get, tend to get bold. So it's quite nice to add this in after. So I'm just going to color in very quickly my hair on where you can see it. And then I'm going to pop that on the layer below. And go color. Mm. <gasps> Love that. Yes, that is a yes. good way to test out a new hair color too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have been, I, since shooting the pink project, I've been dying to color my hair pink. So yeah, blue next. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. <laughs> So what we'll do now is I think I'm going to just cut this out a little bit more because I want my chin to be resting on the telephone. So I'll cut, go into the telephone layer. Um, and I'm just going to polygon lasso tool this just very quickly. There's so many ways that you can obviously cut out, but Again, I'm going to refine this a little bit more when probably tomorrow in tomorrow's because these edits can take, I mean, you'll know, like sometimes like 20 hours to finish. Yeah, I know they end up taking so, so long. Yeah. And I tend to go back and forth like every few days. What, how I used to work with like the seven day project that I mentioned before, it was a portrait a day for seven days. So I would do a concept each day, each day shoot it, shoot a YouTube video behind the scenes wow. and edit it and edit the video in the same day and upload it. <laughs> it was a lot of work. Oh but, my God. Yeah. And, but that was a really quick way of finding out what I like and don't like and actually getting a style. So I look back on some of them. I'm like, not too happy with the outcomes, but the ones that I am happy with, I'm glad that I did because in that week, because then I can sort of take each, you know, section that I like from the images or the days and just create obviously from that and the style. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So split inverse. So we've got our telephone slightly cut out I'm gonna have to go underneath and color that in a little bit more but I actually was thinking of making this telephone a little bit bigger I don't know we'll see yeah I think bigger could be cool yeah so I'll just see how I've just tried that for a moment. So I'm going to go back into the telephone layer, click the layer mask, get a brush again. I'm just going to erase the layer. And this is what I love about clipping masks is that obviously we've clipped these layers to the layer below. And it means that when I'm now erasing, it erases the whole, the whole color and everything. So just going to reveal the chin. I love the blue hair. It looks so, so cool. I know. I really are thinking about doing it now. <laughs> you should. So we'll see what that looks like. Oh, interesting. I like it. Mm. So obviously we'll need to pop in some shadows at some point under there. Maybe I'll just move that out a little bit. Hang on, tiny bit. Just move it around. Uh, yeah, that'll do for now. 
and then I'm going to cut the cord out. So we'll go into, I think that one's the arm. Let me just rename that arm. Telephone cord. I'm going to create a layer mask again. And this time, because the cord is on a, a stark blue background, I feel like it might be all right with the magic wand tool, which I don't tend to use often. I'll select subjects other ways, but for quickness for here, we're just gonna do it this way. Yeah, every once in a while it works really well. Yeah, inverse that. In fact, did that, did that inverse? Oh yeah, it did. Let me do it, take go back. So we're just gonna erase that background. This is looking looking nice. I'm just going to add in a bit more blue there. So I will probably go in with this. Uh, what's happening? Oh, why is it not? It's not painting. There. Add a new one. Something, oh, I know, I bet there's a selection. There we go. It was because I was selected probably tiny little pixels. Oh, somewhere. yeah. <laughs> That's another, I know that, like. <laughs> that always happens to me too. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why is it not working? I like close Photoshop and open it. It's working again. I'm like, why? Yep, yep. Command D is always your best friend when Command it comes D. to. Command D. I'll remember yeah. that one. Yeah. Are you on a Mac? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Command D will deselect anything D -select. weird. Right. I'll remember that one. Yeah. Command D. Uh, so I will obviously be cleaning up the hair at some point, but I'll just leave it like that for now. We'll just pop the telephone cord back in. Um, I'm not sure if I like where that cord is. I feel like it needs to be a little bit more out of there actually i'm going to warp it again so if we go into the layer and up it warp i think we're going to really exaggerate this cord so this is a good thing about puppet warp is that you can actually really manipulate the layer mm -hmm. and it doesn't really damage it sometimes it it might do, but you can just obviously go back and then redo it again. And then you can actually delete these little spots as well. So if you want to start again. Uh, so. Just gonna undo that, see, edit, redo before. Yeah, that's much better. It's a bit more of a corner. In fact, I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. Right. So the arm is there. Do you ever show your work in galleries? Uh, I have done years and years ago, but not recently. But it's something that I've been thinking about doing a lot more. Yeah, I feel Especially like it'd be really... With, yeah, with the colour series. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it's gonna. It's really made for that setting and really big print. Yes. This is what I'm envisioning. So I'm putting it out there now. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that as you were working. I was just thinking this would be so cool to see like a whole room of rainbow room, yeah. images and like really life size like bigger than life size so it's just like a giant head yes so cool this and I can like I said earlier about the props and I can bring them in and have them yeah. in the room or you know like people can interact with them a little bit I think that's something that I've thought when I went into doing the green project and then after and I was storing the props I was thinking 
these would look great next to the in in the gallery and yes and people could like take their own photos next to the yeah. props and you could that make would it be all cool. interactive yeah I definitely yeah. I love that idea that is a great idea I'll help manifest it for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like, hopefully <laughs> someone's listening that can help me do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I was just going to take that arm off. So as you can see, where the... Um, this is what I mean by refining. So I've done this very quickly at the moment with the Magic Wand tool. But I tend to go in and just refine the edges. Uh, hang on. Oh, oh, I'm on the wrong layer again. <laughs> there we go. And I tend to like be very quick when I'm editing at the start, then refine the edges because then I can spot mistakes that I'm making. So, you know, like when you, cause I, I, at the end of an edit, I always go pretty much square by square. Mm -hmm. So from the corner, from corner, and then I'll go to the next bit and then next bit and make sure that I've got everything spit spot and amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all those rogue pixels from different layers. and. <laughs> I know that's what always ends up randomly appearing later on on my pieces. Yeah. I'll go to print something and I'm like, why yeah. is well, there where did you come line? From? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to get rid of this top bit first. I'm not sure as well what color I'm going to do after this. I always have. Since doing the green one, I knew that I wanted to do yellow next. And then since doing the yellow one, I knew that I wanted to pink. And then after that, I mean, I, would, I sort of asked people on Instagram as well, what they think, I like to get people involved a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, so I was actually going to do this purple and then I did a little poll on Instagram and a lot of people picked blue and they didn't oh. know, know at the time what the prop was. But I was like, you know what, actually, I think blue would work, work really well. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool. But I'm so excited to do all the colors. <laughs> I just can't wait to get through all. It'd be so <laughs> awesome. It's it kind of inspiring me to do something with other colors too, because I'm always just like blue and pink and purple. Yeah, and I, I love really, your work. Thank you. I really want to start using green and yellow, but I don't know yeah. how to bring them into my work. <laughs> I think like, like, well, yeah, this is it. Like when you're so used to colors, like I wasn't used to using any color for yeah. years. I would, I would use a little bit, you know, muted toned colors. Yeah. But then since going into this project, it's just like made me excited. So I feel like when you get like in your way, like, and you know, I, I don't know what I'm going to do after this. I'm not sure what will happen after this color project. And maybe I'll go back to that, but yeah, it's so fun to experiment with new. Totally. I know it really like opens your mind to other ideas too. Yeah. And it helps you like break out of that creative comfort zone. Yeah. So yeah, I'll have to make something with yellow and green next. Cause I, I love, I love yellow and green in real life. I love like the trees. It's yeah. my happy place, but yes. I don't like using them in my work. <laughs> How funny is that? I know because it's really your, weird. Yours is like really, I mean, when I think of your work, I think of the universe that's how yeah, I like and, yeah. and actually blue blue is yes. quite a, yeah yeah well that's good I'm glad that it makes you think of the universe yeah which is like, yeah. also a happy place because looking yes. at the stars is like the best thing ever oh absolutely I know so I'm just going around again this will be refined properly but we're just going to get rid of this for now Just very quickly. But we'll leave that for now. Let's go on to. So I've just cut the top bit of the cord down a little bit. And then we're going to bring back the arm. And eventually these will join together. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> can see there 
it's the arm. Like here where the, it's a little bit of a white line there. Right, I'm actually gonna do a bit on the telephone now. Again, I'm very chaotic when I edit these. <laughs> Me I'm like, too. I'll do this, do this, do this, do this. <laughs> I know. So I apologize. Everyone's probably thinking, just stick to one thing, but no. <laughs> That's okay. You got to work the way you're comfortable with. Yeah, exactly. And everyone works different as well. Every, there's no right or wrong ways there. So exactly. Right. I'm just picking up the patch tool, which is one of my favorite tools. It's like, the dream to work with so simple <laughs> but just I love it and I'm going to just go around these and drag to a spot that's very similar obviously that's where I wanted to pick up the pixels from and it's as simple as that perfect which I might, I should have probably duplicated this layer in case I wanted to bring them back, but I don't think I will. I like that. It looks cleaner. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same here because 999 where you are is 911, isn't it? Uh, is oh yeah. 999 <laughs> is that your emergency line? Yeah. Yeah, we're 911. Yeah, that's funny. So this is an English phone. But I actually got this phone at a car boot sale again, um, as we call them. And it's like an outdoor market. But this was like five pounds. But the funny thing is, is that we went there and I was like, I need to find a phone. Um, and exactly this style. And I, I was looking online and they were like, up to a hundred pounds and I was just like there's no point in me doing that because it, I was actually going to get this this phone as inspiration for the big prop so I wasn't yeah. really intending on using it as a prop um so I just wanted it as inspiration anyway we went the, this day a couple of weeks probably three or four weeks ago and there was I don't think I've ever really seen maybe a phone like this before at a car boot sale but there was like two in the space of 100 meters I was like the oh, same wow. phone yeah. I was like someone's getting rid of the same phone they're like this doesn't work anymore how do yeah. I do this thing <laughs> the funny thing is when he when they the man sold it to me he was like it still works I was like I don't use a house phone yeah <laughs> I know it's so weird they're gonna totally become obsolete yeah I remember my grandma had like one of those dial phones that you have to spin yes. around and yes. my brother and I would just go out and play with it. Even though it's working, we're like, this is weird. Yeah. What do we do with this? <laughs> I did I did the exact same thing with mine. I, I, that's what kind of originally I was looking for, uh, one yeah. of those dial ones. But they're just really a lot harder to find, I think, especially secondhand. Well, not secondhand, obviously, because they are all secondhand, but yeah, at this car boot, it was it was mainly these ones so I'm just getting rid of this I just had to google car boot and I'm like I'm so blown away it's so cool I had no idea that this kind of thing existed I it's should like have probably every... explained it <laughs> no, that's okay I figured it was some sort of big sale but because it's... It, I'm, so I was just cool. gonna say I'm saying like car boot is just <laughs> that actually makes no sense is it just a car boot I know I'm like a car boot what does that mean but it's I'm looking and it looks like people can drive up and just park and then have a yes. yard sale out of the back of their car that's so, it yeah that's so awesome yeah. we, we need to do that here in the U.S. do you know I, I have a lot would. of stuff no well we have Goodwill where we donate everything yes and then, or you know you'd have yes. to sell it so, on your own yeah have your own own yard sale but I love this because I there's lots of things that I could sell but I don't want to just get rid of get rid of yeah uh, it's so good. we've made loads of money sometimes like just getting really? rid of old tat like they're just things around the house like I've sold clothes at them but there's there's sometimes like hundreds of cars in lines wow. I, I did I thought that was like a world not a worldwide thing but I felt like that was more than just the UK I wonder <laughs> I 
Let us know in the chat if uh, it's a worldwide thing. Maybe I have been living under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it says popular in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's so good. So yeah, um, we call it Carboo up in the north of England, where I'm from. I'm based in Doncaster, which is like, okay. if you if you think of Manchester, it's like the other side of the country from there. Mm, okay. um, but Jack, my partner, he's from uh, down south and he calls it a boot fair. So it's different. Uh -huh. So when he was like, oh, let's go to the boot fair, I was like, boot fair? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a car boot. <laughs> yeah, that's like us with sandwiches. We have subs, hoagies, grinders, like depending on the area that yeah. you're from, it has a different name. Hoagie. So I, <laughs> yeah, I say hoagie because I'm originally from the Philly area and uh, my husband James says sub or hero, I guess in New Jersey, they call them. So um, we, we have lots of battles about that. <laughs> It's the same with me and Jack. We were always like, oh, there was a, what other words is there? Like a bread roll is, I suppose, what we use for sandwiches here, but we would call it a bread cake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not cake. So I don't know why it's called a bread cake. I love but it. But me and when we first got together, me and Jack, he was like, bread cake? What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> so many funny words for different things. So I'm just going to try and I don't know why this is not making, letting me create. A, oh, it's because it's usually you can do a group clip mask. So I'm not sure. Huh. I'll have to start again with that one, I think. So I'm enjoying this. This is looking good. Yeah, it I is. I think the arm needs to look a little bit more rotated. So it looks like it's just been picked up. Okay, so. I'm not sure about this bottom part of the image. I feel like it needs le like leveling out a little bit rather than it being, because it was actually a shelf, obviously, where mm. we originally, if I go back to this, you can see where we had it on a table like that. So I think I want it to be like just a solid color at the bottom. So what I might do is just do another content aware fill just at the bottom here. I need to just get rid of this bit. I think I'm gonna put, so this is where content aware fills sometimes doesn't work. Depends how close you are getting up to the subject. Yeah. Um, Sam wants to know what kind of lenses do you typically use? So I shoot mainly with a, so I shoot with a A7 IV um, Sony, and then I tend to shoot with a 35 mil, which is my main, um, Sorry, I think there's a tract. I don't know if you can hear it. I live on like a, a little country lane. Yes, I do too. We always have tractor traffic. Yeah. I'm like, where is, where am I right now? Just before we came on the live, there was someone, uh, next, I think it was my neighbor who was mowing the lawn. I was like, oh, <laughs> please stop. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, lenses, 35 mil is my main go-to when it comes to shooting self-portraits in the studio. However, I do like an 85 um, for portraits as well. Mm. Um, let me, what am I doing? The minus, get rid of that. So. 
but I really want to get a 50 again. Yeah. Because I used to shoot Nikon and I had 50, 35, 85. Um, oops. Oh, it's because that was, there we go. So I'm going to fix this a little bit in a little while, but I just wanted to see what it looks like first. Um, but yeah, with the Nikon, I ended up trading in all my gear and switching to Sony about four or five years ago now. And I kind of oh, wow. missed the 50 mil. Yeah. Have you been enjoying Sony though? I love it so yeah. much. Do you we've shoot? Been, you uh, we shoot Canon. And Canon. we've been talking about maybe getting some Sony stuff, yeah. but I don't know. I think... A lot of people who shoot Canon or people that I know have switched to Sony and then switched back, um, back to Canon. But I've never used Canon, so maybe I'm missing out. Maybe I'll have to have a look at it. I don't know. I, um, I'm like not the person to ask for that. I end up, that's my husband's department and I just yeah. use whatever gear he gets. And I'm like, this looks great. I'm yeah. going to Photoshop it anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Do you shoot all your composites then or do you stock? Um, a mix of both. both. Yeah. Yeah. I like when I'm using stock images, I kind of like to have shot it myself because I feel like, I don't know, sometimes I feel like you you can be a bit more refined, but it depends what what you need because yeah. like if you need like a something very specific then totally yeah yeah I, I tend to use stock a lot for like landscapes and backgrounds yeah and then kind of will shoot my own things and uh I also will tend to do some semi self-portrait stuff where I'm more just like using myself as body because I want a certain yes. pose or whatever and and then also it's like now that piece has more meaning versus some random person that I yeah. found on stock, you know? Yeah, yeah. Totally understand that. Yeah. So I'm just refining the edges here with the liquify. Just to make it a little bit more rounded. And then I'm going to clear up these rips as well. Okay. So that's obviously before and then looks a lot better so I'll go in back in with the patch tool and this is one of my dog's hairs so I'll just get rid of that <laughs> <laughs> And obviously these edges need cleaning up again, which I usually would do. So I'll make a new layer, get the clone stamp and just pick up. Around there, so it just sort of blends it in a bit more. Now I'm going to change this phone. So I'm going to start afresh actually. So we'll just minimize those layers so I know where we are. That one I'm going to delete. And I even had, I mean, you can see here actually, I had my nails painted. Oh, yeah. With all the different colors recently. Um, I never used to get my nails done and then uh my friend got married recently so I got them done uh, just some white tips and then after I was like I need color <laughs> so yes <I> <laughs> yeah they look so nice I need to go get my nails done too <laughs> and I've still got them on now they're a little bit I need to get them redone but I'm actually loving having them on at the minute 
Yeah, they're super fun. Because maybe you I should make to... them blue That's... on there. Yeah, I thought that actually. I think with the the green, if we go back to the green, I made them green. I don't know if you can see. Oh can yeah. Zoom in. Um, and then on the yellow, I made them yellow. Cool. So I will probably make them blue. How many sunflowers did you have to buy for that shoot? A lot. I think mm -hmm. I, I think it was, oh, they came in like packs of 50 and I probably bought, I sort of bought like a bunch at first and then had to keep rebuying them every so often. So yeah. I think it was about, probably about 300, 400 maybe. Wow. Yeah. Maybe, oh maybe less than that. Three. I think I bought, probably bought about six packs of 50. So yeah. Oh my God. That's awesome. Yeah. That took a long time to stick them on. It was just glue gunning them to like a strip of material. And then when it yeah. came to, I mean, if you uh, go to my Instagram, you can see the, me like flailing them around a little bit in the studio. And then those were, those were pretty much all composited together because I wanted it to have certain composition, but it was mm. nice to get the pictures of them first. Right, right. So there was sense. a lot of puppet warp going on here. I was doing a lot of um, changing of directions and things like that. Yeah. Okay, so we go to the blue again. Create a puppet mask for that. And I'm gonna go color. And I'm gonna do another layer. Do soft light and then bring down the exposure. And then I'm gonna bring up the color balance and go in with the shadows and Again, Anna, it's not working. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste into this layer very quickly, and then I'm going to out and paste that layer like that, just to show where the blue is. So when you redo this with the big homemade phone, will that image replace this one? Or do you think you'll use them both in different ways? So what I, I think I've sort of decided. So when I started the green project, I just go back to that one. I wasn't finished with it when I, when I'd finished it, I kind of was, I had the props and everything in my studio and I was like, just, there's something about that I need to kind of add. So yeah. I've decided that I'm going to do sort of like a, a main full body image of every uh, prop or set. And then I'm going to do a portrait. So this one is essentially part two of the blue project, but I'm doing mm. it first. Um, because with the pink one, I have done the, um, I've finished it. It just needs signing off and everything, but because I'm working with a brand. And then, um, yeah, with the pink one, I've actually shot another part two, which is a portrait. Mm. So yeah, they're gonna, I feel like when, again, I'm thinking of, whilst creating this set, I'm thinking of gallery setting. So yeah. I can imagine like main 
image and then portrait next to it. I think that's kind of where I want to go with it. So yeah, this is not going to get lost. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good to put it towards something, right? Yeah. So what I'll do is I'm going to select this. Just wanted to see where my fingers like the blue next to my fingers. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be a little bit darker. And I'm just copying the same mask onto those ones. So originally I actually um, wanted, as you can see, I've actually got the outfit that I wore to shoot here um on and I wanted it to be the background to be more of like a cobalt blue and it turned out a bit more of a sky blue so I think I didn't want to go back and redo the backdrops because I, I thought I can just edit it in Photoshop so I was right. going to just make the blues sort of all the same color or at least make them a bit darker That's a little bit darker. Hmm. Kind of want to go in and just feather my eyes a little bit because obviously I need to clean this up. This is where you need to la uh, label layers because I've yeah. lost yeah, <laughs> yeah, there they are. <laughs> I love how cool and bright that looks too. Yeah. I might change my eyebrows actually to blue as well. Mm, eventually. That would be because sweet. obviously where the blue comes in here, but I need to go in and edit all this because that'll be skin tone eventually. So I was going to just add a new layer and put the opacity down just about half. Just feather it a little bit. But I might actually just go in, create a group and take away a little bit of the from under my eyes. And then I'm going to So I think, well, you can see there, actually, I shoot all these images with one big octobox. And that's kind of what the decision that I made at the start of the series. Um, in the studio, one giant octobox and just from pretty much the same area. Mm. So that I knew that it was all going to be quite coherent as a set. Yeah, that's really smart. Plus with this studio as well, I've got like beams running across so the the octopox pretty much only goes in one place <laughs> oh, <laughs> so okay. like, needs to stay there <laughs> that's good though then you can really create yeah. the cohesive look that was the idea i think i did i did a lot of thinking with the first one so that i knew that when i because i wasn't intending on making this a series but as soon as i finished the green project i was like this could be a series like i really could go in now um so when i was brainstorming and you know doing the idea for that like a lot of things flashing in my head like how am I going to shoot this right that'll be what I'll do for the next projects and yeah so 
me just zoom out a little bit do this eye And because, so I, when I was um, first getting into like self-portraiture, I did it at school um, in like my, what we call GCSEs. Um, and I used to like take pictures of myself and paint me and like basically create concepts and um, compositions in Photoshop and then paint from it. So the tool brush just reminds me of painting and I just love taking my time with it. There's probably loads of quicker ways to do it, but I just find it so therapeutic. Yes, I could not agree more. <laughs> I work in the exact same way, just always kind of yeah. like in a painter way rather than like a technical way. Yeah. And I think like um, I've got like a few favorite brushes as well. So I use the soft round for things like this but then like when I'm creating because sometimes I need to add hair in so I'll use the soft mm -hmm. round pressure that one and then the hard round pressure really really small for hair and I just love the way it, it works and glides if that's the word yeah and are you using a tablet yes I've got the Wacom tablet cool um, which one do you have Intuos Pro Medium Okay. Yeah. I've had it quite a while, actually. I, I don't tend to use the little buttons on it because I've just never had time, not had time, but never really got used to doing it. So I tend to use my keyboard. I've got a um, Mac. I don't know what you call it, but iMac. <laughs> what are they called? Uh, not not the mouse, the little. <laughs> oh, like the, the mouse pad? Yeah, mouse pad. That's okay, it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that sounds like a really good setup I mean you know whatever works best for you yeah I think when you get sort of away and then you like it works I, I, I mean I tend to I like to try new things and especially with Photoshop like the content aware feel that came in more recently didn't it probably about a year yeah. or so ago yeah I think so and I was a bit worried to use it and then I was like no just go for it so it, I tend to have my ways but then I like to try new things as well okay so that is the eyes they're looking nice let's get this I think what I'm gonna do is just select the top bit copy and paste that and then I'm going to flip that round. Oh no, actually I'm not, I'm going to move it down. Um, go back onto soft round, just erase this bit. Because what I do uh, after, let's get rid of that a bit, is I'll get a texture. So I have a texture already shot. It's the backdrop that I've got here, actually. I sh I, it's a gray one and I shot it purposefully so that I could use it as textures for backgrounds. Mm. Um, and I, I tend to use that at the very end when I'm adding some texture in at the background. Um, so I'm not too worried about how this looks at the moment because it all blends together at the end. So let's that's the eyes.
This is the long way around, but for some reason when I create it into a group, it's not working. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong there. That's super strange. When you group yeah. them all together, you can't layer mask it. No, usually you can, can't you? Yeah. Let me try this one. It's not. Um. What if you just click down below in the bottom? Yeah, like if you were to add can you click that? Oh yeah, but if I need to group these together, but then they go on the whole image. So I was gonna clip them to that. Oh yeah. That layer. So, and can you Not clip? Sure. Maybe you can't clip a group. Yeah, I feel, I feel like I might have done it before. Hmm, I know. I feel like I've done that before. Anyway, we'll just, Welcome in, Sean. We are making Hello. a beautiful blue image. Holly does all sorts of um, different colored self-portraits. So today is the blue piece. So what I'll do actually is I'll just link them together. Now I'll put do a layer mask. Who are some of the artists that you find yourself inspired by? Um, so I, I've been inspired by a lot of different artists at the moment. It's more painters. So I think tomorrow we're talking about in the artist spotlight, um, one of my favorites. So I'll keep that mm. for then. But um, I'm sorry, oh, I can't remember his name. He does amazing hyper-realistic uh, paintings of um, like theater setups and stuff. And it's like all the different people oh. in the, uh, I, I'll remember for tomorrow. I'll okay. come tomorrow with it. Um, but he is just unreal at surrealist painting. And I've been getting a lot into um, oil painting again mm. more recently. Um, just sort of on the side I don't think I'm too good at it but I just like to practice and so I've been really really inspired by yeah painters and who else is there um it's really hard because I always pretty much follow all my inspiration on Instagram and then I forget the names. I know I'm the exact same <laughs> way. So don't even worry. And that's always my least favorite question to answer when someone yeah. asks me that, but I'm always curious what other artists will say too. And, um, yeah. I, I actually am in the same shoes as you of being inspired by painters a lot lately yeah. and just, and I, I posted like one of my first, um, few paintings that I oh, felt like sharing really? with the world today on Instagram, oh, just wow. like a digital painting. How fun is that? Yeah. And I'm Love like, I, I don't like sharing many because I'm like, I don't want to, uh, for it to die to the algorithm and then to feel sad about it. Yeah. You know? But yeah. I'm like, I, I've been so inspired by painting lately that I'm just, I'm trying to get back into it. I used to paint yes. all the time oh, in that. college and yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's cool that you're kind of getting into that too. I feel like a lot of artists are kind of going back to the painting roots again. Yeah. Because I mean, with like, uh, I've briefly seen like the AI, I've used yeah. probably have as well. And yep. I, I don't know what my opinion on it at the moment. I've been really enjoying seeing people's creations. I have to say, yeah. I really enjoy looking at them. I'm like, wow, how is this happening? Yeah. How's it working? How does it work? Yeah. Um, 
but I do love tangible art as much as I'm working a, on a picture yeah a lot of yeah when I when I used to create portraits that were all basically stock images or you know images that I'm creating I just feel like it's not so I like to have like something that I can feel whether that's like actually painting or creating a prop I just feel like yeah. there's just more to it it's just there it feels real yeah um I, totally so I don't know agree. It's so Not relaxing sure. too to like kind of get yeah. into painting and and just like spend time totally immersed in the real world and away from digital computer screen. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely agree with you there. I think like especially the fact that I mean, I kind of learn art through painting mainly. Um mm -hmm not photos really as such I was sort of just playing around with I think I had like a Nikon cool pics camera and I would yeah. like take take pictures of myself then photoshop myself just very briefly and then I'd print it out like I said earlier and then paint from it oh cool um, so you could like like a yeah I was saying it's like manipulating it but there's the different channels isn't there it's like you you've got different steps to it which is what I think I like about these step these sets that I'm making is that there's different set steps and then it all comes together at the end yeah which I think yeah. is what a painting does because you've got the background you need to you know like the layer in and you can see it transform as you're going through but then sometimes I get like a little bit like I can spend hours and hours on a little section and it's not working for me <laughs> yep Yep, I totally know the feeling on that too. <laughs> I know, and I find like I go through phases where I'm like totally fine with that. And then other times yeah. where I'm like, I'm not even going to waste my time today. I yeah. don't even want to do art. I don't even want to get involved with it. And then other exactly. days where I'm like, yes, I love this. <laughs> totally agree. So last year, uh, before, I, th I think I'd not quite started shooting because I got into the studio last September. So I started creating the, the first green project then. Mm -hmm. But in the summer, when I was working on client work, as I was working on it, I was watching Portrait Artist of the Year, which is a program. I'm not sure if you've seen it. It's in the UK, but they no. loads of artists get together and they sit down, usually famous people, and um, they paint or, or do whatever medium they've got. It's mainly a portrait. It's usually sketching, painting, whatever medium. Yeah you know that kind of thing and I watched the whole series throughout and I just was like I really 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 want to paint <laughs> and yeah. then I sat down and did it for a few months and then yeah like you say you, sometimes you're just like no I can't do this right now I need to have a I break know. I know uh, but it's so weird like I get so inspired by it yeah and I love doing it, but then, but I always know I can come back to self-portraiture for like photography and Photoshop and, and yes. it just feels like a safe space for me. Absolutely. And yeah, I'm so glad to know I'm not alone with that, where it's like, you may be really inspired by something or like, you're, you're like, oh, I just want to get into painting right now. You sit down to do it. You're like, nope, can't do nope, it right now. Today, yeah. <laughs> you're like, but why? I'm so inspired. Why can't I yeah. sit down and do this? And it's, it's like your body's just, just nah. nah. Yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes as well, like when I was doing the yellow project with the hat, there was some yeah. days where I was, even with that, I was just like, oh, I just need to get through this. Yep. This, and, you know, some days it was really like difficult to stay motivated to do it. But then you know that that end goals come in and you're like, yes, then that's what keeps me motivated. Yes, absolutely. Let me go back in that and liquefy a little bit more. In fact, uh, on that bit, so I need to merge that. Why do I not have merge layers? Oh, I know, I've probably a quick one. There we go. It's 
So going to liquefy. There goes a tractor by my house too. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny, like, because the lane where they go down is literally, like, there's no, we call it a path, path next to the house. It's literally just next to this wall here. So when oh, I'm in wow. here shooting, it's like, grrr, like, rumbling, like I'm having an <laughs> earthquake or something. Oh, it's so funny. Country life. Yeah, I love it, though. Me too. Yeah. Where did, Where were you before? Um, we lived in LA for a while and I, so I'm, you had the I'm, van, didn't you? Or yep. you still, yeah. We still have the van and, uh, we traveled for two years, um, in the van and then bought a house and mainly because we were doing more of these streams and wanting to like have an actual office and set up some yeah. work time. So that was really, really helpful. But yeah, we still have the van and planning on doing some trips this fall and, <sighs> Yeah. Sounds amazing. Love that. It's so much better than being in LA. And we lived in downtown, so we're like right in the center of everything. <laughs> I've never actually been to LA. I've always wanted to come. And we, you know, well, we talked about the Max earlier and yeah. before we came on. And I've always is that in LA? It's in LA, yep. is it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I was thinking yeah. about coming, but maybe next. You year. should do it. I know. <laughs> that would be so fun. I'd love to meet in real life. Yeah would love that yeah yeah LA is really cool there's definitely a lot of fun things going on incredible restaurants and um you know just a cool scene to see but I'm glad I don't live there anymore <laughs> I just like clean air <laughs> yeah we um we was living down south for just before the pandemic we moved up here um but yeah we were like near London and it was lovely we loved it but we were in a smaller house and it just felt a bit claustrophobic. And then, yeah, yeah, it's just nice to be in here. Yeah. So, I think I wanted to make that a little bit bigger. So I like this. I'm going to probably fix this area here so that we can actually join it up. But I like this composition. Maybe a little bit bigger, actually. Hmm. So we have about 25 minutes left. So if anybody has any questions for Holly as she's working along here, um, anything you've ever wanted to know about a cool telephone self-portrait piece of art, color art, self-portrait art, let us know. Let's have a look at this hair. Yeah. It's cool when you turn the blue on and off on the yeah, hair because it it's like, it looks yeah. so natural blue. I feel like now it's not right anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's what I love about this part of the process is that I just end up like turning layers on and off, on and off all yeah. the time. So just going to paint in a little bit more. And then I'll see what the eyebrows look like. Maybe may, might be a bit much. We'll see. Mm. I think that might be a bit much. Gonna take that off. So I need to go in with a lower opacity brush. So I'll go and uh, do a layer mask. Just bring back my head there a bit. And then what I think I'll do eventually is 
painting some more strands here so this sort of like closes the gap because I feel like there's a little bit of a gap mm. there so I might paint over these little strands of hair And I was thinking potentially a blue lipstick, but. Oh, that could be cool. Yeah. We'll see what that looks like. Um, Mervyn wants to know which technique you use for hair in Photoshop. Uh, how do you mean? Do you mean um, like painting it in? Is that what you I or think like, so. Uh, yeah, either I can, have, I can show they you. They said, uh, "Is channels a good technique?" So I don't know if they're talking about. Yeah, I yeah. Cutting out. I would usually um, let me just see where is it a razor tool, but I don't need to cut out the background at the moment because. But with it being blue at the background, you don't really need to from down here a little bit we won't need to cut it out too much but to add hair in i'll show you what i would do i'll just finish this lip first just to see what this looks like again this is just me practicing and seeing what this looks like and testing it So this is a very brief, not sure about that. I think that might be a little bit much. Yeah. I wonder if you like lowered the opacity on it or then it might look like you're dead. Yeah, I was literally just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure if I can say I look dead. I know. <laughs> I feel like that's what it is. <laughs> I feel like I look like someone from Kiss there. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe without it, it's better. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, so I'll show you. I'll show you what I do with adding in hair. Again, this will need real, re really refining. But that's just a case of using the opacity Oops, that way. The brush tool, and just bringing it back a little bit. But I'll add in some hair here. So what I'll do is I get a, I think I'll go for the hard round pressure size and make it super small so about three pixels maybe a little bit more we'll see yeah a bit more than that you can't really see that actually we need it to be blue we'll go for a light blue so you can actually see it and what i'd do is i'd just play around the opacity and just join on. So like where these hairs here, well, the highlighted hairs, I sort of do like mimic it. So you're just uh, using the soft round brush for this? It's the hard round pressure size, oh, but it's okay. tapered. So the end looks a little bit more like hair. Gotcha. This process actually takes quite a long time, yeah. usually. So, and you probably can't really see it that detailed. I mean, I need to just refine the hair. But that is just super, super detailed. Like really, if you were to zoom right in, you'd see that. Right. Whereas, like, 
can't really see it there. Yeah. But it's quite, I like to, like I said earlier about going around each part of the image and adding in the super fine details. Because when I envision this in a gallery, I want people to see, you know, it really like crisp. Yeah. Yeah, those are all the little things that end up taking the longest amount of time, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I think I might have to fill that in a bit blue, but we'll... You probably we'll also, like, lasso a section of your bangs and copy it. Yeah. And then just, like, fringe the ends fringe out, it, you know? yeah. Have a look at that, Let's see if we can do. Take that bit. I need to add a bit more blue in the middle there. It's going to look strange until I actually paint that bit with blue. I know. Got to always trust the process, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just add some blue to the top of it and see what. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Oops. I think I need to fringe that a bit a little bit more. I always like these brushes. <laughs> I don't know what what it's doing, but I know I actually use this a lot too. Yeah. I think it needs to be darker. I just do a clip in there. Yeah, so far, far away that looks good. But I'll have to go in and add in more hairs on top and yeah, keep refining it. But yeah, from far away that looks cool. quite like that in fact I haven't saved the whole time apart from just now very uh -oh. <laughs> left so good thing he's no longer here yeah. to yell at you <laughs> <laughs> I know I always get to the end of a project like eight hours working on something I'm like oh to save it I've had that before actually when I was uh what image was it it was this, I think I might have it on my website. It was, um, so it was one where I basically covered my head in paint. I think it's on here. There, that one. Mm. And I was editing it for probably, well, quite a long time. It probably was like eight hours or 10 hours and I think it it saved, but it was saved very really weirdly. And then I went to open it back up, and my computer just fully crashed. Oh, that's so. And worst I was like, feeling. oh, I know. So I had to just redo it all. But then I think sometimes I'm like, it's maybe it's a blessing because you actually it ends can up see better. Which, yeah, yeah. That's how I, I try and be positive about it. I'm like, no, it's okay. I can focus on it yep. properly now. And yeah. And for that one, did you actually put the paint over your head? Yeah, so I think there's uh, 
there's a video on my YouTube channel of me actually shooting this. Wow, so I'll have to check I, all that out. Yeah, it's quite a lot old. It's very old, it's probably not old, probably like seven or eight years ago now. Mm. Um, so this is when I was like in my real experimental stage of like, what can I do? But then again, this was with color again. So actually maybe this is where it yeah, stemmed from. Yeah, exactly. I know. It's actually, I do. Re I remember doing this one and thinking, wow, red. I've not really like, ooh, I've not really worked with red before. Yeah. Oh, like it's a really bold color. I know. I love seeing like where these little things start to come from. Yeah. Those are cool. So that's actually one from my seven day self-portrait challenge. Mm. Um, and I really enjoyed editing that one. It was just like a blackboard and I put my hand and feet and mouth oh, and everything wow. through it and then just edited it together. That's really awesome. So this one actually was a seven day self-portrait challenge again. So these were actually all edited in probably about four or five hours, which is not too long because usually now I'm editing for like 20, 25 hours sometimes. Right. But yeah, so I really like how this is turning out. I just feel like we need to refine it now. I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger. I think it's going a little bit slower because of all these layers. So with the project, I've been doing it four by five uh, ratio, but with some of them like the green one, go back. I decided to do a square and then actually this second one of the yellow project that was full portrait which, which I didn't actually crop it so I'm kind of with the second image or part two of the each one I'm kind of like I can play around with the aspect of it mm. so I don't know if to change this to square but these are the thoughts that go through my head when I'm I know. editing I end up just going back and forth on everything. Yeah. Um, question for you from the chat. Do you get yes. photo manipulation work from clients or do you work on such projects just for creative satisfaction? So I I do a lot of um, sort of like album covers, single covers for uh, musicians. And so I get creative clients that way. These kind of projects are definitely just for creative satisfaction um and for my own personal growth in terms of creativity because I think if we don't have these then mm. you can get a bit stuck so I get a lot out of this um and yeah. then I get to do things like this streaming the edit so it's always like you know you get some nice perks of doing the creative projects that are just for you um but I can show Um, so I've done some like brand work, I did some with Skittles. Oh, that's cool. Um, that was with my last Adobe Live that I did. Uh, I don't know if anyone can remember that. Uh, that was like two years ago now. Mm -hmm. Um, but the seven days, well, in fact, I don't know if I've got any creative client work on here. If I go on my Instagram, um, so I did this me and a friend who is a musician she's called stars she uh i actually went to school with her so we like quite creatively close and we just love working together i've done loads of shoots for her over the week over the years um oh, cool. but she's got some new singles out i think it's out tomorrow actually this one um but we yeah it's called good for you but we, she goes, we just go into it like knowing we're just going to get each other. And so creatively, we're just like bonded. Um, and she loves colour at the moment, and I love colour, so. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Um, but I don't know if I've got any other creative client work on here. That was sort of, we, I'd shoot with her, not necessarily using like a lot of Photoshop and stuff, but we did a lot. Of, I got on Attitude magazine oh, cool. for, with stars. Do you know uh, Steph Edwards? She used to go by um, me, myself, and Steph on Instagram, and now she's uh, kind of made a new account called To You from Steph. Oh, no, I haven't, but I'll write that down. I'll yeah, check that. her out. Some of your um, older work reminds me of what she used to do, too, and now she switched fully to illustration. But Oh, um, amazing. Yeah, she's from the UK as well, and I think now she lives in the Netherlands. She's really an oh. awesome person. What is her? I'll write it down. Um, look at her it. old account is me, myself, and Steph. Me, myself. And that's where she has her Photoshop work. I'll check that out. Yeah. It's always it's always quite strange when you're like, because I don't know how my work and style is perceived. Mm -hmm. So when you've like create connections with other people it's interesting yeah. to then go see you like oh okay yeah I know right it's cool um anyway we were editing this the blue not sure how long we've got left actually uh we, we have like we have five minutes left five minutes yes so I was going to test it in square Might take five minutes to crop, <laughs> <laughs> which obviously I need to edit. I don't know. I think I like it as it is, maybe. Yeah, I might actually just move it over a little bit because I feel like it's slightly off center to the right. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah. So usually after I've refined everything, um, we'll go and take it into Lightroom, but I think we'll do that tomorrow once I've, cause I'm going to go away tonight, probably just to have a, you know, a little bit of a play around and get everything yeah. right tomorrow. And then I can potentially, um, open it up into Lightroom and just show you how I would color tone it because that's the key. I've got like a sort of preset that I've used for pretty much them all, but I do it in like a bit of a, 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 a odd way where I bring it back into Photoshop and then layer loads of different presets on top of each other. Oh, and cool. Use opacity. Yeah. So it's quite interesting. I think that way. Yeah. That um, sounds really unique and, and like a cool process. Um, and you'll be showing that tomorrow, you said? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So yes, and then hopefully if we, everyone will join us tomorrow. Yeah. Too. If we do finish this, then I do actually have the pink project part two, which I can edit tomorrow. Ooh. Which, is, which I think I don't know if I've got the... I can't open that because that's got the pink one in it, so... I'm not open it yet <laughs> but um <laughs> the oh actually i've got the the files here you know i love a good oh that color already <laughs> so this one part one actually i i've posted a, like some behind the scenes already on my instagram and it's got um a, a door which i painted pink um, and then I had letters, so they were kind of like flowing out of the door, but that's all I'll say for that. But they, okay. then I decided when I was doing the blue project, I also sort of envisioned like a big letter explosion. So, oh, that we definitely have to do that. Tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh man. Well, this has been really cool. And I love what you created. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for being here today with Holly and I, and we will be back tomorrow at 9 30 AM Pacific thank time you. for part two and join us as Holly works between Photoshop and Lightroom to create a cohesive look and put the final touches on the piece that we worked on today and hopefully dive into a little bit of pink work. Uh, stick around for the illustrative illustrator creative challenge with andrew hawk rattle coming up right after this followed by designing icon sets with courtney sunner thank you again for being thank here with you. us be sure to subscribe on our youtube channel and have a great evening take care everyone bye, bye. thank you see you tomorrow